Good afternoon or good morning wherever you might be. This is Roger Gilbert. I'm uh, in the Rongo Rongo Live video studio and I'm reporting on behalf of Aquafeed and Fish Farming Technology magazine. Uh, it's our pleasure today to have in the studio with us Dr. Antonio Garza de Yetta. He is the Secretary of Fisheries and Aquaculture for the state of Tamaulipas in Mexico. He is also the president of the World Aquaculture Society. Uh, welcome to uh, you, you uh, Dr. Antonio. Welcome. Thank you, Roger. Uh, thank you for the invitation. It's very nice to be here. Yeah, well, thank, thank you, you for, for joining us. us. Um, you're based down in, obviously, from my perspective, you're down there in uh, Mexico and uh, focusing, I know you're focusing on fisheries and, and aquaculture, but I'm interested in, in what, is, what the developments in, are occurring in aquaculture in your country and also in your region. Thank you, Ryan. Well, aquaculture is, just knowing, uh, is growing at slow pace, unfortunately, still in the region. Uh, you know that uh, worldwide agriculture is uh, used for many, uh, with many object objectives uh, in Asia mainly for uh, food production, uh, but in, in Latin America it has been used as a source of uh, production of low and high value fish for, ex for exports. And uh, uh, the problem is that it has not permeated in the culture yet. If you come to, you still uh, talking in all the region from Mexico to Brazil of how what is aquaculture, many people are going to think uh, to talk about acupuncture or anything, uh, so, uh, so things that are very, very, very different from what we do. Okay. So the thing is that aquaculture is not part of the box properly. Unfortunately, uh, only approximately 18 percent of the total production of fisheries and, uh, and aquaculture that is consumed by uh, humans in the region is produced by aquaculture, which is compared to the 53 worldwide, we are behind. And the consumption of, of seafood is not a very high also in the region. We are talking that the average for the Latin America region is 10.5 kilos, which is very low compared to uh, it's, uh, it's half uh, almost half of what the boat consumption per capita is. Uh, and in Mexico, we are a bit higher, 12.5 kilos, but still very behind. Um, aquaculture in Mexico is based mainly in shrimp, shrimp in the Northwest. Uh, it's uh, around an industry of around 130,000 uh, tons. Uh, but the aquaculture is, uh, potential is here, it's uh, very big. Tilapia has been cultured in many, in almost all over the country, and there is a big uh, opportunity for other species so, such as oysters, mainly in the state of Tamaulipas, where we are, uh, where we have the Laguna Madre, which is a lagoon of 230,000 hectares, which with very good conditions for oyster farming. Okay. So, uh, also there's have been very strong efforts on the Pacific side for uh, the production of uh, marine uh, open water, in open water uh, cages, uh, marine species, and it's developing. It's still uh, not, not consolidated, but it's in the consolidation process. And I think we are an example for the region and, the, and worldwide of how things can be developed. Yeah. Of course, this we, we do this through joint part, uh, uh, doing partners with um, uh, the American companies in most of the cases. So do, do you think that there's a, a positive future for aquaculture? I mean, you might like to balance that against fisheries because obviously uh, fisheries are producing a lot uh, of uh, marine or, or fish for human consumption. Do you, do you think that uh, aquaculture has a good future uh, against uh, uh, capture fisheries? And to tell the truth, I think that aquaculture is the future. It's, it's the present now. It's, we're just in the region a little bit behind. But the aquaculture is the best way and the most, can be the most sustainable way of producing protein in the world. Mm -hmm. And if we don't uh, actually uh, use this uh, 
advantage that we have with other terrestrial animals. We are, uh, I mean, we are using the biggest uh, advantage that aquaculture has. So uh, aquaculture slowly needs to be to become a national priority in uh, in many countries in the world, and many, especially in Latin America. And as soon as it, it becomes a national priority, not only for exports but also for um, internal consumption, uh, it will uh, uh, become more relevant, and you will see a, a strong increase not in many species that are targeted for for uh, for exports, mm. but for uh, species that will be consumed. Uh, in the national markets. Yeah. And, and is your government, for instance, investing in that uh, aquaculture production for national consumption? It, uh, we had strong programs in Mexico a couple of years ago. Unfortunately, in the last uh, two or three years, uh, there's uh, uh, there's no zero investment in that, in, in, in that topic. So that has this is something that we expressed. We had the opportunity to be in the state of aquaculture for Latin America and, uh, and with FAO and, and, and the global perspective as well. And the thing is, aquaculture is in everybody's uh, speeches. No, but nobody's putting uh, uh, actually is no in, in anybody's budget yet. Yeah. So in the region, there needs to be a specific budget for uh, for uh, aquaculture. Uh, private and the public investments need to be, uh, uh, of course, uh, promoted, and this is this is a big challenge. We need to change the way the things are being doing, as the authorities in in the region are are not have not done really their their yeah. homework to develop aquaculture as it should be. Yeah. yeah, I said in your introduction that you're also the president of the World Aquaculture Society. Uh, is that is that making uh, inroads into Latin America? Is that bringing new technologies and bringing um, maybe enthusiasm and investment uh, into the region? I think the, but the, uh, the World Aquaculture Society has created is in the region is a big network of professionals. I think the knowledge exchange is the main asset that has been uh, done through this uh, through this network. Um, there's uh, members of all uh, Latin American countries, 33 Latin, uh, countries in the region. There's uh, there are members of all of, all of these countries in WAS. Um, I don't think we have been successful in attracting investment to the region through WAS. Although in Merida, in this year, where we're actually organizing our world event, it's in the November 8th to 12th. I, uh, uh, you are all welcome to visit uh, Merida, uh, Mexico. This year, we are starting the best, the first investment forum in aquaculture, which is going to be organized by by us inside the, our conference, and we expect that this uh, forum we can. Uh, make it uh, after that an independent event. Yeah. Oh, that sounds uh, really exciting to actually focus on on something that's going to bring about uh, significant change based on economics or based on viability. Uh, but it's really interesting that that you recognise the potential in Latin America and are reaching out for that investment. So, uh, is is there anything else like? Uh, like uh, Port, uh, Portugal uh, is, uh, sorry, uh, Brazil is uh, a different uh, sort of country. It has an investment going on in aquaculture. Are there, are there other countries in the, in the region that are specifically focusing on aquaculture, do you know? Well, there's, uh, there's uh, countries that are focusing, of course. Uh, uh, I think, of course, Chile, which is the largest producer in the region, which is completely different from the rest of the country because they produce Atlantic salmon and that oh, only yes. is, uh, it only produced in Chile uh, in the region and they are the second largest producer in the world. Uh, we have Brazil which is producing a lot of tilapia. Uh, they have been huge production of tilapia recently but also they are de developing a local endemic species which is native species and that is very significant and interesting. 
mm. um, uh, the use of the cachama uh, and other other species which are have are uh, being produced as much almost as tilapia in, in, in Brazil. And we have Colombia, which is pushing very hard in the in, in aquaculture in the recent years. A lot of investment, a lot of developing, a lot of training, which is actually one of the steps that you need to follow. I think yeah, that's a, the arrowhead. First training, and then we do the rest in aquaculture. And of course, we have Ecuador that is doing up as, as the extremely solid uh, uh, shrimp industry, and they are doing things very, very well. Yes. And, and finally, Dr. Antonio, if I can ask, uh, what, what is your uh, in view on nutrition and uh, feed supply? I mean, is, is the, is the uh, investment in, in uh, aquatic feeds meeting the demand, do you think? Is that an area that needs focus? I think we still need to uh, do a lot, uh, a little bit of homework in, in some ways, uh, because the, one of the big concerns uh, of the environmentalists, precisely the feed, uh, we are always fighting in, uh, in the region for feed is being added to the to, to the big lakes or reservoirs that feed pollutes a lot, which is. Uh, but I mean that is it's not uh, really accurate if you want to if you manage it correctly. Uh, I think uh, feed uh, needs to increase its technology, uh, be better, have a better uh, has a better life uh, after being fed added to the water. Has to um, be more digestible uh, and uh, and uh, actually feed can be one of the best tools to uh, make a, a, a farm profitable. If you manage it correctly and you have a good feed, you're, you will have a, a, a profitable operation. And, and that is something that people sometimes don't uh, pay attention. They, they buy cheap feed and it's the most expensive thing that they can do. So good quality feed is the key for a good successful agriculture mm -hmm. in the region of the world at least. That's, that's good to hear and uh, uh, great. Um, thank you very much for taking the time to uh, join us today, Dr. Antonio. Uh, November 8th to the 12th, 2021 is a WAS meeting in Mexico and uh, the invitation is out there. I take it for people uh, internationally to attend if, uh, if that's possible uh, under our COVID conditions. But uh, thank you very much for joining us today and all the best. Uh, over the coming months. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.